Hi, I'm Charlie. And I'm Liz. And we are the Adventure Closet. We're going hiking today. To Cascade Falls in the Rocky Mountain National Park. Come on guys, strap on your hiking boots, let's go. Breakfast to champions. Butter, peanut butter, and banana. Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. There are more than one entrance. There are. There is more than one entrance to the uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. There's a couple of little entrances in, in the town of Grand Lake called uh, the North Inlet and the East Inlet entrance. There are a few trails on those entrances. So today we're going to go to the North in Inlet on the other side, the Estes Park side, there's also a couple of entrances um, uh, over there too. Uh, one of them is kind of to the north uh, east of the park, and, and that's how you get to Gem Lake. Uh, but uh, we're not doing that one today because that's about 48 mile drive for us. Um, so today, starting off at the north entrance which a lot of wildfires happened up here as we showed you earlier but normally you would take a a left here or you would continue to the left to get to the entrance of the Rocky Mountain National Park now there shouldn't be a ranger station here so you probably don't need a permit but I would advise having your National Park Pass anyway for this trailhead and there's probably a sign. We'll let you know when we get there. So the town of Grand Lake and the lake are right there. And uh, as luck would have it, the road's closed, so we need to go up. So we gotta walk about a quarter mile up that road. But as you can see here, it's part of the uh, Rocky Mountain National Park and it's the North Inlet and Tantu Trails. We're also arriving kind of early and there's already a ton of cars here. The cool thing about this trail, which I didn't know until just now, is that it's part of the Continental Divide Trail. Actually, that's the Continental Divide Trail. Goes right through the town. Kind of wraps around the back part of the lake there. And then continues on up that way, which that's the way we're going. Spotted a little free library and I'm done reading this book. So I'm gonna go see if I can trade this in for something new to read. Anything good? Uh, there's a couple of books in here. Something good. The Seen Stone. Oh. Mm, the Stand. I haven't read The Stand. There's also a couple of Louis Lamour Louis books up there. Huh. I don't know. What do you guys think I should take? It's this little red book. Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> I like Charles Dickens. David Copperfield was a great book. Uh, I think these are children's books down here. Or young adult. Well, maybe not that one. <laughs> Alright, so we're walking up the closed road. <laughs> uh, about a quarter mile. Yeah. 
So half mile total. Half mile extra. Some nice houses up on the hill. There's a deer in there. Hopefully you can hear this, but there's just hummingbirds flying everywhere. This is why the road is closed. It's washed out. Sounds like the river's raging. Or the creek. looks like we're coming up on the official trailhead finally. It wasn't too bad, that quarter mile there. Just a little uphill. Um, we'll go check out the sign. There's a restroom here at the trailhead. That's where Charlie is. But what I didn't tell you guys at the little library, while I'm thinking about it, is we do uh, book reviews. We call them adventure and books. Um, on our website, which is theadventurecloset.com. We've got a few up there. Um, we try and post to our, our blog there occasionally. We used to do it every week, but it got to be a lot to keep up with. Uh, so we're just going to post there when we're inspired. That way it keeps the content higher quality um, so that it's more enjoyable for you guys when you hop on there. Um, but definitely check out the adventure and book reviews. Uh, there's, we're all, all over the place with reading. I do most of the reading and, um, I really don't have a particular genre that I love, but, uh, you're gonna, it's kind of like our channel. It's gonna be all over the place. So you might find something you like in there, uh, no matter who you are. We even, we even have a kid book in there. So, yeah, anyways, here's the sign. North Inlet. We're at elevation 8,545 feet. No machine gun shooting, no, no animal feeding, there it is. No dogs, come on. It's everywhere, no dogs. Who else thinks that's kind of frustrating? Like, we don't have a dog, but like, so many people are traveling with their dogs and, you know, at least there should be some trails in the national parks that you can bring your dogs. Like, I don't care, give them the stupidest trail, but give them something so the dogs can get out and enjoy too. All right, rant over. Wait, cougar. What they say, warning lion country. Nice. Maybe we'll see one from a distance. These flowers here, I only know by one name, uh, road daisies. That's what my mom called them. And there's something really special about these flowers. And I think throughout this hike, I want to kind of tell you a little bit about my mom and tell you the story of how road daisies are quite the tradition in my family. We're here, because it says you're here. We're gonna go 1.2 miles plus 2.3 miles, which is weird because the sign over there says 3.4 miles, but that adds up to 3.5 miles, um, to Cascade Falls. And uh, check that out. Uh, it does say that the trail is closed ahead, but I believe that this would be the junction to Flat Top Mountain, which would be where it's closed. So, we should be good. Also, gotta watch out for mountain lions. So, 
So the views are already amazing here. Um, we've just begun and we just got to the official trail, but there's so many wildflowers. I've seen like four or five different varieties right here along the trail. It's super beautiful. So the trail cuts right along private property and the creek flows right over here. But who owns this beautiful portion of land? Back right up to National Forest. And it looks like the fire stopped right where this fence is. And Grand Lake is just beyond those trees. Yeah, Grand Lake is just right over here. And all that over there is National Forest land too. Or National Park, sorry. And uh, everything burned up to the, I mean, there's a couple trees that have burned past, but for the majority of it, they're not. My mom has always been a child of nature. She grew up playing outside. She had horses. She was a natural born adventurer. And she's always kind of marched to the beat of her own drum. And I think I owe a lot of who I am to her and the way that she raised me in a very unconventional way. And I didn't realize how unconventional it was until I became an adult. When I was an infant, uh, I used to ride shotgun inside of a box in the front of the silage truck that my mom would drive for my dad when we were out working in the fields. And car seats were invented <laughs> at that point. Uh, we just didn't have one. We kind of just lived out in the country and survival of the fittest, right? Must have been a really fit baby. We just talked to this couple that's hiking on the, the lake and they said that this forest fire, uh, during the forest fire, there was 140 mile an hour winds blowing out of the Southwest that blew the fire up and over the continental divide. But luckily, I believe the next day, they had a foot of snow, which helped douse the fire, but that's just crazy. Can't imagine. 140 mile an hour winds in a fire. Yeah, that's like hurricane force. Yeah, <laughs> like. but you can definitely see the devastation here. Yeah. It's, I mean, you see the line where the fire just went up the valley. It's all green behind these burnt trees and then it's all devastation up there. It's crazy. It's pretty hot today. You know what might feel nice is a cool dip in this water, eh? Alright, you guys test the waters for me. One day while my mom was, um, you know, keeping me in that box in the passenger seat of the silage truck, she had left the window open because it was super hot and uh, a load got dumped in the window on top of me as an infant. So yeah, she had to dig me out. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there was any repercussions. <laughs> so later on, my parents became farmhands and um, they worked and we lived on the farm uh, for the Nordstrom family. And the Nordstrom family, if you haven't heard of them, they have a very, very fancy store. Costs like $200 to buy a t-shirt there. Um, I don't buy my clothes from there. My parents didn't either. Um, it was a very stark contrast to the lifestyle that we lived on the farm. Um, my parents were not rich. 
but the experience out there on the farm was very rich because the Nordstrom family, because they had all this money, it was like a 600 acre, maybe bigger farm called Sky Meadows in a town called Monroe, Washington. And uh, they had exotic animals there. There was pigs and cows and all the usual farm suspects, but there was also zebras and alpacas and camels, reindeer. And we played outside a lot, uh, me and my siblings and my mom, um, cause she, she was the one home raising us at that time in our childhood. And uh, so, you know, every day we were running wild out in the, the woods out there. We were along the river. Um, it was just, it was a beautiful place. And um, there, I think I mentioned it, if I didn't, there was camels there. And I had a friend, Camel, I was a toddler at this point, and his name was Hermie. And he was a really cool camel that for some reason we connected with each other. And I'd go out there and play in the fields with the camels and, you know, freak my parents out, go, you know, running underneath their feet. But they were so patient with me and they'd lift their feet individually so that I can run under them and they'd protect me and sometimes not want to give me back to my parents. So, <laughs> um, you know, I think that's kind of cool. Not everybody can say that they had that kind of experience. And, um, you know, that's just a, one example of the things, you know, that I experienced growing up was my mom raising me. And uh, yeah, so, Let's talk about the daisies. Charlie just found a flower that I've never seen before. That is beautiful. Actually, let's not talk about the daisies just yet. We'll talk about those later. Um, <laughs> so, okay. The last story, I was a toddler. Now, later on, let's just skip to teenager. And our, my parents divorced shortly after the, the farmhand days. And um, then all of a sudden we became poor. <laughs> my mom was a single mom. And uh, we moved into an apartment in town. Um, and my mom has always had terrible cars, like so embarrassing, like hated her dropping me off to school in them. Um, but there was this one car in particular that uh, it was a Renault. If you haven't heard of them, they're these French cars <laughs> and they're, they were cheap little, little commuter cars from the eighties. It might have been a 79, but probably early 80s. A little silver car, all done up. Uh, ran through more oil than it did gas. But the seat broke in it. And my mom didn't have money to repair that. So what she did is she uh, tied down a milk crate as the driver's seat. And that was her seat. Um, so yeah, you can imagine that would be very embarrassing, but <laughs> also I think very character building, uh, for me growing up, uh, uh, looking back, it's just hilarious. And I'm, I'm thankful to have grown up not having a lot of money. My family was not rich. And it really made me look to other things to find richness. And I think that's what has eventually led us to this lifestyle is that we're not in this for the money. Although we need some money to 
keep the wheels going. Thank you, Patreon. Uh, but this is what wealth is to me, is being out here. And um, Charlie's had his own experiences that brought him to that same conclusion too. Uh, he was also raised by a single mom and um, it, it gave us good character and appreciation for the simple things. And so we're really thankful to our moms. So yeah, maybe we'll talk about the daisies next, but actually we will. I'm not gonna keep you guys going cause that's kind of annoying, but <laughs> we'll uh, finish up this hike first. At least a little bit of it and then I'll tell you. smell the faint smell of a skunk now in Washington that means skunk cabbage but I don't know if they have skunk cabbage out here but they might have skunks <laughs> giant boulder right alongside the trail here person per scale, that's huge. <laughs> wow. Made a, probably made a heck of a sound rolling down that hill. Just spotted a deer out there in the field. This area is called Summerland Park. So beautiful, despite the burn. And now I just noticed that there's two moose over there. Do you see them? Yeah. This place is crazy. All right, it's time to talk about the daisies. My, there's this tradition with my mom that um, she loves the road daisies. Road daisies grow in the strangest places. 
they'll grow on the side of the road. It's, usually it's on the side of the highway you're gonna find them or you're climbing up a mountain and all of a sudden there's some road daisies and they're hard to get to or embarrassing to get to. <laughs> and it's a race every year. The first, it's one of the first flowers that bloom in the year, yet they bloom all throughout the summer. But it's a race to find the first one and whoever brings the first one to my mom loves her best. And there's four of us kids, plus, you know, now all her grandkids are in on it. So there's a lot of competition. But um, I'd like to think that I, I win most of the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's fun, you know, spotting that first daisy. Like you're always just keeping your eyes open. Like, is, has that one bloomed yet? Is it gonna bloom yet? And then you know, when you find them, you never have a good way to bring them back. So it's always in these weird makeshift faces. Like a lot of times it's like a water bottle <laughs> that you had rolling around the floorboard of your car and uh, you know, they're not in the best shape by the time you get them to her, but it's it's an exciting tradition and something unusual. I've never heard of that <laughs> from any other family. Uh, so seeing that uh, bit of road daisies when we started our hike off today had me really thinking about my mom today and uh, how cool that tradition is. I did win this year. Um, we were out in the desert where there was no road daisies, but I found this piece of opal that looked like a single petal of, um, of a, a road daisy. And I wrote this poem that I sent to my mom and I sent her that. So it's not exactly a 100% true authentic win, but on creativity, I definitely won this year. I was thinking, what is that smell? And then I look down and I see these like, elk tracks. Um, hmm. And then I see an elk has peed there. <laughs> Very pungent smell of pee. Like musky. This is the kind of hike that you kind of look forward to the breaks. So you can just sit and listen. Looks like we're going downhill a little bit and then back up again, but you can see that river over there. So it's called the North Inlet, which uh, we're assuming is the North Inlet for Grand Lake uh, because that's what's over that way. Oh yeah, I remember at the sign, it call they called this the North Inlet Trail. I've, it would help if we researched more. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we now know why it's called the North Inlet Trail. <laughs> yep. I just love all the wildflowers here, which is so perfect considering telling the story about the daisies. But also wanted to, since I'm sharing a lot about me, I wanted to tell you my one of my favorite songs that uh, I've really identified and connected with is Wildflowers by uh, Dolly Parton. And uh, if you haven't heard it, go listen to it after this video. It's a really great song.
is a gorgeous trail. Uh, we've been passed by people that have already passed us and they're heading back just because we're taking our time and, and uh, enjoying it and filming it and so we can be able to share with you guys who may not be able to take this hike um, or with you guys who are going to take this hike. All right, so I wanted to add one more song to that list. So you have the Dolly Parton Wildflowers, but also Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers Wildflower is another great song. So check both of those out. It's a hot day. The sun's just beating down on top of us. But uh, still a beautiful gray hike. Seeing a waterfall in the distance. I'm not sure if that's the one or not. So the cool part about geology is that stories can be told and you can speculate your own stories. Like Charlie just pointed out like, all the sandstone is rough over there, but over here it's smooth. So he thought maybe there's been a waterfall here at one point, which could very well be. As opposed to that over there, how it's all jagged. Yeah. And then on the other side of it, it's all jagged as well. That's why geology fascinates us so much. I hope we don't ever bore you guys with it. But I think you're here for a reason. Because you like this stuff too. Nature is pretty wild, isn't it? All these round stones too tell you that water was here.
it seems the burn has ended right here. And which kind of tells you how gorgeous, how much more gorgeous the cycle has been. I mean, just look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Looks like a few more burnt trees, but look at that meadow. Beautiful. Just past this meadow, the people we talked to said that uh, there's about a hundred trees down across the trail. And uh, we just came for Cascade Falls and we just wanted to see a little bit past this and uh, we did. So we turn around and heading back and uh, see you on the next adventure. Well, that was fun. <laughs> we don't know how we said it at the same time. That was cool. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yes, thank you for liking and subscribing and uh, checking us out on our other social medias, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. We Patreon. appreciate it. Yes, and Patreon. It's so rare we get a new Patreon member, but maybe today's our lucky day. Thanks, guys. Bye now. Bye now. Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Charlie. And we are the Adventure Closet. And today... We're going somewhere? We're going to Cascade Falls in Rocky Mountain National Park. So come along with us. I'm Charlie, actually. And she's Liz. I'm Charlie. We're both Charlie. Can I, can I be Charlie this time? I don't know. <laughs> He's always Charlie. You're always Liz. It's your turn to be Liz. You have a hair in your mouth. I always do. It's, 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 it's lunch. <laughs> oh yeah, we haven't had lunch yet.